It's 9 p.m. on Wednesday the 23rd and we just realized that we don't have any food for Christmas or Christmas Eve really either. So we decided to come over here to Central Market which is a high-end grocery store. They have a lot of really fantastic stuff. It's hard to leave here without spending a lot of money. Uh, even if you only get two or three items, it's like $5,200. It's uh, pricey. And then over here in the distance, you can see some of the decorations across the street. That is Highland Village, that little shopping center that I've taken you to with the Williams Sonoma. Let's go in. prepared meals here and here so we're gonna check out some of that I think a quiche would be good for breakfast Italian sausage and arugula cheese quiche spinach and mushroom ew gross I don't like mushrooms but he loves them so do we want the Italian sausage and arugula okay grab one of those what's this one with the chives is that what that is yeah, that's the Italian sausage they and arugula. They don't have a standard, you know, piece of arrangement. Doesn't look like it, not today. They usually do. And they have these uh, sacked ones, a dinner for two. Oven roasted turkey breast. There's a lasagna al forno. Vegetable enchiladas. So we have some options. Let's walk around and get some other stuff and then we can come back and get this if we don't see anything else. What are these? Pumpkin pies. Wow, look at these things. We need a pie, don't we? Almond cherry buttermilk. That sounds delicious. Uh -huh. This is, I guess, pumpkin. That looks like pumpkin. This is... Oh, it's sweet potato. Oh, it's sweet potato? Yeah. This is pumpkin and cream cheese. That's good. Well, my vote is for one of those two. I'm more interested in that one because I've never had one like Say that. Again, I can't read it. Almond cherry buttermilk. Section, lots of cheeses, and the bakery section, one of my favorite places. Four different pies in one, you can't go wrong. Yeah. Bourbon pecan pies back over there. Bourbon pecan pies, yeah. that sounds good. Ooh, rugulas. I have to have one of these. I fell in love with these in New York City. They are amazing. See what I mean? We already we have two pies? We have a quiche and a pie. Oh, a quiche and a pie. See, within like three minutes, we've got $30 worth of stuff. The wine section. Pretty big. And they have this chocolate bar area with all kinds of lovely chocolates. And it keeps going and going and going. They have this whole section of olive oils, it's huge. We did pretty well, we got six items and it was only $86. We came here specifically to get prime rib and we thought they wouldn't have it, we thought they'd be all out. They actually did have it, but the guy weighed it and priced it out for us and only two ribs, two ribs was $76. So we decided against that, especially since our lunch at Pico's the other day was almost $150. Okay, here's our little haul from Central Market. We have the pie. God, I didn't realize that pie was so expensive. It's $15. The quiche was $16. I didn't even look at the prices on those. Good Lord. We got a little glazed ham. That was $30. A half gallon of orange juice, freshly squeezed orange juice, which is the only orange juice I drank. That was $10. Got a little 
container of uh, butternut squash bisque, that was six, and the arugula, apricot arugula, amazingly delicious, $5. today I've taken it easy this morning I watched some videos and now I'm doing some chores around the house I've got laundry and the washing machine I'm about to clean off this table I've actually already cleaned some of it off I forgot to show you a before the beginning um, but we're done with gift wrapping so I'm gonna put all that stuff away just trying to get the place a little cleaner for Christmas tomorrow happy Christmas Eve everyone by the way so here is the sort of before okay table is cleaned off now except for a coaster the stuff i need to edit my videos because i've been editing out here lately and the tape to tape up this box that i need to ship after christmas now it's time to tackle this mess i have all these boxes some of which have stuff in them that needs to be put away this is stuff that goes in my handbags of course that's all vlogmas not cleaning that up yet and then my messy desk that looks like this every about five minutes after I clean it off. What is that, Roxy? Did you find a new friend? Did you? Did you find a new friend? What is this, Roxy? What is it? What is it? That belongs to Baron. That's Baron's new friend. You can be friends too. 
All right, I got this area all clean, got all those boxes put away. These two are the boxes that the two coach bags came in. So I'm holding onto those just in case I need to return those for some reason. These are gifts that are going to someone else so they don't belong outside. Got all of that cleared off, except that, that appeared here. And here's my desk. Still a lot of stuff on it, but it looks a lot better and more clear than it did. Hello, Baron. Do you have big plans? Hello, Roxy. Baron, are you going to do the advent calendars today? You're so very helpful. So helpful. Hello, Roxy. So helpful. Jealous? You're so jealous. It's Christmas Eve, Baron. Let's get the lights on and start doing advent calendars. You ready, Bear? Take it away. Camera shy? Look at those squinty little eyeballs. He's so handsome. You just can't stand it when somebody's talking about Baron and not you, can you? You can't stand it. Well, hello. Welcome to Vlogmas Day 24 and Merry Christmas Eve. Actually, by the time you're seeing this, it's Christmas, so Merry Christmas. I should have said Christmas Eve yesterday, shouldn't I? I just looked at my clock. I thought it was like 12, which makes no sense because a long time ago it was 12. Uh, it turns out it's three o'clock. How did it get that late? So it is time for advent calendars. Oh no, it's the last day of advent calendars. I just remembered that. But that means tomorrow we get to open all the prezzies. I'm quite ready to open them today. I don't think it's fair at all that we have to wait another day, but we're going to. <sighs> all right, let's finish up the advent calendars. It's a sad day. There are two sets of eyes staring at me. That's kind of hilarious. All right, we've made it through the entire calendar, except for the last day. Number 24, what did they give us? I'm hoping for a sparkling wine but I don't think it will be. It is a red. I don't recall, oh, it's a rosé of some sort. I don't recall having seen this one, or it's just a really light red, you can see through it. Red Tide Wines, a Grenache, oh, Grenache is good, from Paso Robles, 2019. Pretty illustration. Okay, looking forward to that. I've really enjoyed this advent calendar, and I plan to do that one again next year. Again, it's from In Good Taste. I do have them linked below in the description. They don't just do advent calendars, they also do wine tastings. You can get sets of, I think, six wines, or you can buy individual bottles, especially when you compare it to the prices of other companies that do things like that. They are priced very reasonably, so I highly recommend that if ever you are interested in that sort of thing. And we've also made it through every day of the Sugarfina calendar. Thinking about saving the box on this one and reusing it, because it's designed well, it's pretty, and I could put little trinkets in the box. Also thinking about saving this one. Why do I save boxes and packaging so much? I don't know. I always think I can reuse it, and then I never do. Um, all right, door number 24 has a little Christmas tree on it. Oh, and I see green and red. We have little green and red Christmas trees. How cute. Christmas trees, raspberry and green apple flavored gummies trimmed with sweet holiday spirit. So I will eat the raspberries and I will give the green apple ones away to someone who would be willing to eat something so disgusting. By the way, I do like green apples, I just don't like green apple flavored things. Now, I was about to swing around here, but you remember that we don't have anything left. Oh, these are empty, by the way, they're just there for decoration. Um, we don't have any more advent calendar items, so I asked you guys to vote on which of these you should open, and I got more votes for the large Dior bag than anything else. I will warn you before I open that, that both of the Dior items are small items. I only have the big bag because my sales associate was kind enough to give me a variety of their beautiful packaging this year. But it is actually quite a small item and one of the least expensive things you can get at Dior. I bet it's something you didn't even know that Dior sells. So once I open it, let me know in the comment section below if you even knew that Dior sells this and if you've ever tried it before and if you have what you think. Okay, can we just take a moment to admire the beauty, the stunning beauty that is the Dior packaging this year in 2020. 
it is just gorgeous and it continues around the side doesn't that kind of look like a fish eyes and a mouth and then it's mirrored here there we are and then the back and the other side look the same gorgeous inside see i told you the item was small is their tissue paper i love how they fold it up i've never seen any other company do that and the big reveal the item is a canister of tea did you know that dior sells tea this is the montaigne tea it's a white tea with rose and jasmine let's open it up and have a peek take the lid off and it comes in this reusable tin the lid takes two hands to come off because it has a nice seal so i had to put the camera down for a second and this is how it looks. It's a beautiful white tea with rose petals and it smells just lovely. I wish you could smell it. Now I will link this below for you and I will also, I'll link, well, I'll link all the teas. I'll just link the, the one page that has all the teas on it. Um, this one, I think that they would sell this year round or at least in the winter months. I don't know if they sell hot tea year round because it's the first time I've ever looked at their website and seen tea, but they have three different ones. There's this white, there's a green tea, and there's a black tea, if I remember correctly. They also have a holiday tea. They have three holiday teas, and that's what I really wanted to get because they have their holiday design, or at least a version of it, on the tea canister, and that one is more expensive. I think this one was about, it, it, it's expensive. It's really a lot more than you should pay for a tea like this. Um, it was about 65 or so. The ones in the holiday containers are about 80. It's ridiculous. The holiday tins, there are three different ones. There were, and, and there were three different colors. It's like a black tin with the little firework design on it. And there was like a pinkish purple one that I really wanted. And that tea also sounded the best to me. I think those might all be black teas. And they have like cloves and spices. So it's a holiday flavor too. They've not been available online since well before December. And when they finally did say they were available in boutiques, they were only available at three of them, the New York, the Beverly Hills and the Miami. And I live nowhere near any of those. So I haven't been able to get that tea. However, you can sign up if there's something that's sold out on the website, you can sign up to be notified if something comes back in stock. And I got an email last night that that one tea that I really wanted was still not back in stock, but they suggested another one of those three holiday teas that was available online. So I went on and purchased that one. And I think that that's supposed to be shipped in the holiday packaging. So we'll see when it gets here. But if you're in love with that Dior packaging, as a lot of people are, and you're looking for something relatively inexpensive to get, partly to get the packaging, this is one way to do it. Of course, I can't guarantee that they will give you the packaging or that they still have any in stock at this point. But if you're looking for one of the cheapest things you can find at Dior, that's one of them. There's also a bar of soap that's about 20 or $40. So that's even less than the tea. I haven't purchased that. I wanted to get something I'd actually use, but there you go. Now it's time for the dog's very last C-O-O-K-I-E from their advent calendar, but please don't tell them it's their very last one because they won't understand that. For the next few months, every time I sit in my chair in here, Roxy is going to bother me wanting advent calendar time, and it's not going to happen. It's really quite cruel that I've been doing this to them every year. I may need to save those boxes and give them treats every day, but don't tell them I said that either. All right, let's go. Hello, Roxy darling. Are you ready for a cookie? You're so cute. That would make such a cute picture with you and your coloring and the owl and the coloring and the chair and the coloring. You're just adorable. And look at your little head tilting back and forth. You're like, like a bobblehead. Roxy the bobblehead. Roxy the bobblehead. Roxy the bobblehead. I'll just say a bunch of random nonsense and watch your head turn back and forth. The YouTube people love that too, Roxy. You ready for your cookie? Are you ready for your cookie, Baron? Come on. Come on, Nisky Cookies. I forgot to say, and this may be obvious at this point, 
but being the second to last day of Vlogmas and tomorrow's video being the one where I open everything and that's gonna take a little while, it may be clear at this point that I will not be doing the candle review as part of Vlogmas. I discovered it is much more time consuming to burn these candles and take notes than I thought it was because when you burn a candle, you have to wait for the whole top layer to get liquid, which can take a few hours with some candles. And then you don't want to like do one in the morning and then do another one in the afternoon because you still have the scent of the one from the morning. So you've got to sort of just do one per day. And I haven't had time to do that. So I will do a video on that, but it will not be part of Vlogmas. I'll do it some other time. Also, uh, another time I do plan to interview Jill Maurer about some jewelry questions, but again, not part of Vlogmas. Haven't had time to get together with her and do a call, but I will show you, as promised, my giant jewelry box and the jewelry that I have in it, so you can see how I've organized that. Hello, Baron. Come on. Come on, Bear. You can do it. You did it earlier. Come on. Come on. Roxy, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Bear, come on. Come on, Baron. Baron. Come on. Oh, oh, that was my fault. I knocked you down. And I'm also going to melt the hot chocolate bomb. Don't know if I'll do that today or tomorrow, but it's gonna happen. All right, I recently showed you my shelf in here and how I've got things organized. And there's my giant jewelry box. Let me just do a very quick overview of my jewelry that's not in the jewelry box. I have this earring stand that I got on Amazon for big, long and wide earrings. I will link that below for you. This I got years ago at a place like Claire's or something. So lots of earrings hanging on there as well. Little dachshunds I've collected from around the world. Actually, they're all from Italy, except that one from Mexico. And more little trays with jewelry. These are some earrings. I have a silver bracelet in here I need to polish and put away. Some dachshund brooches. That little dog with a ceramic paw print. More dachshunds back there. These are Limoges boxes. They're magnetic and a little bit difficult to open. So they open up. You can put stuff in them, but I don't have anything in them. And that was supposed to be Sebastian and Baron. And that little silver dachshund is the most recent. I got that on Etsy. And I'm rather disappointed with it because I thought it was going to be a heavier metal, like a solid metal, and it's very lightweight, like it's uh, hollow, but it's a ring holder. Rings on the end there. And then my Henry Bendel jewelry box and little ring holder. This is where I hold the two bracelets that I wear every day. A couple of necklaces. Then up top here I have a bunch of beaded necklaces and this stand where I hang bracelets. I also, way back here, have these jewelry things. Can't get a good shot of because they're so hidden, but it has pockets on one side where I put big chunky, chunky necklaces and then these Velcro things on the back where I can hang longer necklaces. But now let's look in the jewelry box. This doesn't have a lock on it. It's just a little twist. And when you open it up, it has this gorgeous giant mirror and all of this area. There's a little hidden space here where I have a business card holder from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And this is a kaleidoscope that a friend gave me. I have a bunch of rings up here. You may notice my Jill Maurer rift ring in the lemon quartz. And then I have three of her rings here. Here's the Julie Voss ring that I unboxed as part of Vlogmas and the opal ring with which I did the same. This one, I think that's the Swarovski ring I unboxed. And then I have a few pairs of stud earrings. I really like this method of storing studs like that, and I have more that I would like to put in there, but I, I need more room for them. In this part of the divider, I have some pendants and stud earrings that are all Murano glass that I got in Italy. Same here, more pendants and earrings that are Murano glass. And same here, except this is the only one I got in Italy. I think the other three I know for sure this one I got in the States. I think I got those earrings in the States too. This is a necklace from Tori Birch that Yota gave me. It has real pearls and then these handmade glass beads that are the, the eyes, like the protective eyes from Greek culture and lots of other cultures. 
I'm being interrupted here. Pardon all those boxes, they need to go back in the closet here. But I'm waiting till after Christmas because there are some things I need to put in them that are wrapped. Oh my god, she has the, she has your fox. What are you doing with that fox? You've gutted it. Why would you gut the fox? Were you jealous? That's pretty rude. Also, do you mind? I'm trying to work here. I'm trying to film a video. Get brother hiding under the desk from that terror. You're a terror. Okay, where were we? This is more Murano glass. And these are my Gucci earrings that I got at the outlet this summer. And that Kendra Scott mood ring with the flaws in it that I opened just the other day. And then in the center here, the gold beaded necklace here with the snake. That's more Murano glass. Actually, I got that in Burano from a little shop. And the gold earrings are also Murano. And then the other two necklaces were both gifts. So that's everything in the top. Let's look down here in the four drawers. Start with the top one. I decided to divide the first two drawers by the color of the metal. So this has a lot of my silver pieces and a lot of turquoise. This turquoise my mom got me from, I don't remember where, when she was on a cruise. And then forget that bracelet, that's Kendra Scott. I'm not impressed with that. But the rest of the pieces are turquoise. The blue one up here is not turquoise. That is from Mexico. A friend got that for me. The other turquoise pieces are all from New Mexico and they're made by Native Americans. And then this is turquoise that I got at a turquoise mine in New Mexico. This is malachite that a friend gave me and jasper earrings that the same friend gave me. These, I think they're just resin or something. They're very lightweight, but those are from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. These I purchased on Etsy for something ridiculous, like 30 or $40, like ridiculously cheap. It's white buffalo turquoise set in sterling. Those earrings should have cost several hundred dollars. They're also Native American. Um, the person selling them had no idea what they had, so I got lucky. Those turquoise earrings were a gift, and then you just saw me unbox those silver ones from New Mexico. And then these are the other studs I was telling you that I would like to find a place for, like the ring holders, but I need more room. These are Tiffany silver earrings, but I put different hooks on them because the ones that were on there originally were very thick, and I couldn't wear them. They hurt my ears really, really bad, and my ears would hurt for several days afterwards. And then those, of course, are my Jill Maurer Brahma earrings. Two of my Jill Maurer necklaces, my Herd necklace. Now I forget the name of this one. It's not the Stampede. I forget what it's called, but it has the Stampede design on one side and a brown sapphire on the other. I forget the name of this one too, because I always get it wrong. The Durham necklace, I think. So it has the striations on one side and the flourishy design on the other, and then the Taurus necklace. And then this is a turquoise and pearl necklace that was a gift. Now for the second drawer. This drawer is for the gold jewelry. These three in the back are technically bracelets, but you can also wear them as a choker necklace. Those are all from Swarovski. The next section here has some Henry Bendel and has a couple. I think it has two Henry Bendel necklaces. And then this one I think I got at Saks Off Fifth. This third drawer has several Swarovski bracelets, three of those. The herringbone necklace that you saw in the unbox is part of Vlogmas. And then there's a little gold choker, not real gold, that's a costume jewelry piece. I think I unboxed that one in Vlogmas last year. This necklace was a gift from a subscriber a couple years ago. And these earrings I got down in Galveston. I don't know if that's actually a stone, if they're actually gold plated or anything. I think that they are. Based on what I remember paying for them, I think that they are something. Um, here I have pearls. Those are also from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And these earrings are from the same shop where I got those hoops with the green stone. These two are, I forget what those are called. They're like a crystal. You see, they're where you bang open the rock and it has those crystals growing inside. And this one I got from TJ Maxx of all places. And I forget where I got the other one. I think, oh, I remember, it's a little store in the mall, Katie Mills Mall a long time ago. I don't remember the name of the store. Here's more Swarovski 
bracelet and earrings, and then that's a little faux diamond necklace. There's the bracelet and gold huggy earrings that I got from Misoma that I opened in the advent calendar this year. The heart necklace is from the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and the earrings I got in a tiny little shop in Civita, Italy. These are some of my favorite earrings that I've ever had. I've worn these a million times, and they are also from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I don't know if you can tell, but they have a peacock there and there. The jewelry, by the way, if you're not familiar with the, the jewelry from the Metropolitan Museum of Art, it's all designed after pieces in their collection. That little sacred heart pendant, uh, that's a cheap little piece from Target. And I forgot to mention, one of the things I did with the jewelry box is pull my nicer pieces from my collection that I wouldn't really consider costume jewelry so much, but pieces that are closer to fine jewelry. I don't have anything that's super fine, like that costs many, many hundred. Well, I have some pieces that cost hundreds of dollars, but I don't have anything that's like thousands. I don't have anything that belongs in a vault, you know, but I do have a lot, as you can tell, that I've amassed over the years. Here's drawer number three. Not a lot in this one. Um, the little jewelry roll here is empty. And I just have these two big statement necklaces. I got these from the same vendor. Um, I, you know, I'm an art teacher and we have conferences for art teachers. There's this vendor that's always at the conference if it's held in Galveston. And I got these necklaces from her two different years. And then drawer number four, last drawer here. Here's an overview. These two necklaces both belonged to my mother when she was young and they've ended up with me. I forget exactly what that stone is called, but as you move, uh, the light changes and it looks like the eye of a tiger, or at least that's what people say. So I've never looked into the eye of a tiger. Yes, and then this one, which needs to be polished, has a large piece of turquoise. And then this was a gift. It's also turquoise set in silver. Also badly needs to be polished. You probably noticed quite a few other silver pieces that badly need to be polished. And then these are my sparkly tennis bracelets. We talked about those recently in another video. Here's my charm bracelet. And then these are the Louis Vuitton pins from that show in New York a few years ago. And underneath them, are charms that have not made it on the bracelet yet. And the last thing in the jewelry box is in here, and I actually showed this to you recently. These are the little Swarovski rings and the little gold rings that I got from Macy's that I use for stacking. Just had to go change my camera battery, and I found this one laying here at the scene of the crime. Baron, I know, I'll fix it for you. Yes, you love her even though she's bad, don't you? Okay, there was one more thing in this bottom drawer that I didn't show you, and that is this piece here. Let me just pull a piece of it out. You may have noticed me wearing this in another video a week or so ago. I think I had it on in the Teaching During COVID Vlogmas video. And this is a long silver and gold tone necklace from Henry Bendel, which was also a gift. And that's what's in my extra large wolf jewelry box. OMG, look at that. It doesn't get much cuter than that, does it? It does not get much cuter than that. Well, that jewelry segment was pretty long, so let's do the hot chocolate bomb in tomorrow's video. Oh, check it out. I don't think you got to see the sleeves since I'm holding my camera here and not filming with my big camera and doing a regular video. Isn't that cool? Has little sort of rhinestones on it, as does the collar. Got it at Macy's. If I could find it and it's still available, I will link it below. Well, again, here's wishing you a very Merry Christmas or whatever you may celebrate. And remember, today is not the last vlog. Must tune in tomorrow to see my Christmas day, and we'll see what's in all these boxes. There's some pretty good stuff. Bye, guys.